the hard truth with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Twenty sixteen marks the thirty second celebration of the National Farmers Day, which was held in the Brongafi region under the theme Agriculture, a business response to economic growth. However, questions still remain year after year about the viability of the agri sector in Ghana, especially with the level of investment. Output within the sector continues to decline year after year, and uh, with twenty sixteen being an election year, expectations of numerous promises for the revamping of the sector will arise. Now, do these awards still remain or provide the necessary motivation for our farmers to invest more and expand their produce? Or it's just an annual affair in a declining sector. Tonight, on The Hard Truth, to discuss these issues and more is Ms. Paulina Adi, the Acting Director of Women in Agriculture Development Directorate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. My name is Nana Akwesia Kunidra Santi Samuels and you are watching The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Octoglo Ghana Limited and supported by your favorite bank, Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. I have in the studio tonight uh, Mrs. Um, Paulina Adi. Uh, she is the acting director of the Women in Agriculture Development Directorate of the Ministry uh, of Food and Agriculture. And uh, welcome to the Heart Truth, ma'am. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for being here today, being Farmers Day. We are grateful for your time. Thank you. Now, Farmers Day, ma'am, was uh, instituted in, um, I think, 1985 uh, by the government in recognition of the vital role farmers and fishers play in the economy to actually motivate them to to grow more however some people have questioned um, the relevance uh, of this day seeing it as nothing more than a mere flamboyant style of celebration let me ask you looking at the alien state of agriculture sector do you think that farmers and the nation at large have much to celebrate farmers and fishers put food on our table every day mm. They may have challenges, but they still try their very best to give us the very food we need for a healthy life. We have come a long way from 1985, and I think as a nation, we should laud the efforts of our farmers, because without them, we would have no food, and no food means civil unrest. Agriculture receives, I mean, I wouldn't say insignificant, but very small uh, amount of attention now. Uh, 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 in, 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 in government and uh, do we really, I mean again, uh, going back to the question, do you think that it's not a relevance but do we have anything to celebrate at all this day? Yes, we do. We do have a lot to celebrate. It would be good to go around the countryside to see what is going on out there. Why isn't that translating, ma'am? Why isn't that translating into uh, a much produce or much money in the agric uh, agri sector? Well, agri is linked to industry. So, when it goes to industry, we all applaud, but the basic raw material is provided from the agricultural sector, mm. and that goes to industry. Let me take a commodity like cassava. Right. Cassava has transited from a poor man's crop to now an industrial crop. It is being used in our breweries, and it is through the effort of production that cassava has gotten there. We also have it for various uh, uses, including confectionery. So, I would want to say Agric is playing a very vital role. And in addition to that, we also have the service sector, which is also part of the whole system. But you cannot single agriculture out and uh, just uh, talk about it uh, going down the trend. Mm. Yes. If you can recall, I, I think then the first 
National Farmers Day was uh, I think celebrated on the first Friday of December yeah. in 1986 at Osino in the Eastern Region. That was in 85. 85, thank you very much. When the best farmer at the time receiving two machetes, a pair of uh, Wellington boots. And a transistor uh, radio. Exactly. Now, we've come a long way from that, you know, with the best farmer now winning juicy awards. In 2015, for instance, ma'am, National Best Farmer Ibrahim Musa won house. 3,000 Ghana to the check, um, a laptop, a car, you know, among others. Let me ask you, in your view, how effective do you think these prizes or awards have motivated other farmers to put in more effort and um, into the investment of the agriculture? Right. Uh, for any venture, you'd have to invest. And uh, a lot have done so to get to the position of being national best mm. awardees and uh, for any human being we have ambitions somebody wants to build a house buy a car etc how but is the selection done the criteria no, how do you even say that i of course i'm, I'm the best for my right. wish i wish right yes i mean right. how is that done right the agricultural extension agents live with these farmers and they know who are the promising farmers and this selection is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region so mm -hmm. when these names are brought up we have a selection committee uh, drawn from the top universities of the country and they go around all these locations to really ascertain whether what they've been given are the hard facts and uh, a video footage is also done and it is brought down to Accra for the final screening. So that is how it goes. Okay. But it is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. And that is for the national. And then for the regions, the names are also provided for the regional and then it goes down to the district. Okay. So they have to look at the scale of operation they also look at how diversified the operation is, whether you are very no innovative, supporting the community in also to improve their farming efforts and so on. Mm. So that is how it is done. So going back to the question, yeah. how, how much do you think these prizes, you know, does it really motivate uh, the farmers to yes, really it want does. to do more? It does. It does motivate them mm. because um, if, for instance, I have a challenge with transportation, and then I get um, a pickup for free. It will help me transport my produce and it will bring efficiency into my operation. Mm. And it does motivate others. Uh, uh, but Paulina, if, if, fantastic. The ministry provides cars for, for the best farm. What of the roads? I mean, if the roads are horrible, how do you expect well, the farmer to ply well, or use that road to go yes, to the farm? Yes, for the agricultural sector, we also have the uh, feeder roads. So they also uh, are the do feeder their roads meat, doing yes. their job? In some areas, yes. Because without the roads, of course, you would have your uh, produce perishing, in the farming communities and it will never get to the point for consumption right so it is a concerted effort i would say do you think that smallholders and peas and farmers have over the years received the requisite support from um, the government in developing themselves and increasing uh, their production capacities yeah i think the government has done its best as i speak we still have a uh, extension services delivery free every farmer has to tap into what whatever numbers we have we have right. challenges though but we are now complementing that with um, an electronic uh, platform so that is free and uh, we also have subsidies on fertilizer for them to buy at reduced costs to increase their overall yields we have uh, various um, interventions for farmers training and so on so i think uh, at a smallholder level the transforming bit for me is the market mm. access once they have market access on their own they are able to do quite well for themselves we'll be right back the hard truth with akosia konedu only on vice at one brought to you by echo bank
EcoBank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and EcoBank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back to The Hard Truth and today is Farmer's Day uh, under the theme uh, Agriculture, a business response to economic growth. I still have in the studio uh, Mrs. Paulina Adi. She is the Acting Director of the Women in Agriculture Development Directorate of the Ministry of Food and uh, Agriculture. Mommy wanted to say something? Yes, uh, yes. talking about markets, mm. that is what generates the demands for the farmers to produce and produce more. And by markets, I'm not just talking of food physically being on the markets, but we as consumers mm -hmm. to consume from what is produced locally. And that is what is going to drive the agricultural value chain. Having talked about the value chain, we talk about uh, farmers who are just at the point of production. But for Farmers Day, we have now recognized even agro-processors who transform agricultural produce into various uh, products. And we've come along with improved packaging, minimization of post-harvest losses because when we transform we are able to preserve the foods to keep them until we need talking about post-harvest losses yeah. don't we talk about that all the time i mean on on your records yeah. we know or it's stated that the, the records are clear that um we've actually done well at that side but in reality when you talk to the farmers it's a different story. Yes, that is uh, at the point of harvest, yes. when we hit the glats. Yes, and uh, well, I talked about agric linking up with industry. If we can get industry taking up most of these uh, produce, mm. we can preserve them and then just have them all year round. But uh, there has been a weakness along that line. There are some farmers, or let me say processors, who are doing very well to process most of their products from local production. And I think we need to applaud them for that effort. We have very big uh, factories, but uh, they are unable to process foods because of some attitudinal issues. You sign contracts and one party is unable to meet that, meet yes, that, part, yes, of that part of the deal. Mm. So then you, you, you really cannot uh, continue. We've had these instances. But that's notwithstanding, there's a lot of post-production activities going on. Reducing the losses. Yes. One major problem that inhibits large-scale production is the land tenure system. Most farmers do not invest in improving on land because they lack tenure safety. security. Exactly. Now, in your view, how can we tackle this problem? Do you think that successive government have shown enough commitment to, to, to this uh, task? Yes, to a large extent, I would say yes. Even up to the point where they were even getting uh, land banks for mass production. So I would say that some effort has gone into securing land for farmers. But where farmers are also capable of um, renting land for agricultural produce, they've gone ahead to get this uh, parcels of land for production and they fed quite well. Poverty is a regular, I would say, phenomenon in experienced by many farmers. Some spend a lot of efforts to actually cultivate uh, farm produce only to end up losing sites uh, because they are compelled to sell their produce at a, at a low price or something. Now, how can we again tackle this problem yes, comprehensively it's the, it's to make the, sure the, farmers are able to uptake, get more? It's the uptake that for me, really would work things out. In some countries, they consume 80% of their own production, and it is from the highest point. Everybody complies. So until the demand side pushes for production 
and then we get good uptake, the farmers will be able to just let go of their produce at really good uh, prices. Uh, right, yes, yes. Uh, coming to the price. And, I mean, you, you, you go to the market and then you ask, um, which tomatoes is this? Maybe this is from Burkina Faso, this is from here. And then the, the Ghana one is too expensive. I mean, so what can you do? I mean, from where you sit, what can be done to make sure we have competitive prices and people actually go in to buy the maiden uh, or things or props produced here? If we drive the production, it can go low. Because if we are not a... But what goes into the driving of the production? The driving of the production is for us creating markets for our farmers. Let's say that we've created a market for, yes. for them. Yes. How do we cut? My problem is cutting off the prices to make it very affordable for... for yes, so a, then they will produce people. more. That is the economies of scale. If mm -hmm. they are able to produce more, it will reduce the cost of production. How do you think or how do we change the relative roles of women and men in agri as well as to make sure women are given more equal opportunities to men when it comes to the access to farms and credits and lands. Right. Thank you very much. I think uh, I would want to say that, uh, well, I wouldn't want to say women should be equal to men because when it comes to Why production, not? when it comes to production, the men have the day. But for agro-processing... Why do you that say is, that? They have the day. Why do you yes, say that? Yes, that is where you find a lot of men in production. They control land. Women have somewhat access, though, but where they have the financial muscle, they are able to rent or even buy land and still produce. Mm -hmm. We've had women who have acreages of land and they are in production. Mm -hmm. But we need to address issues properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we find a lot more men at the production end of the value chain, we need to focus attention on them and also see what we can do to help the women there. When it comes to agro-processing, that is the area for women. So then we can look for appropriate processing equipment for them and they can have FLD. So that is how I see things. Under production, we have women who have acreages of maize, even uh, tree crops, mm. because they can afford. We've even had a woman who won the best uh, yam farmer. So there are women who are capable, but we cannot cast it so wide. There are successes, but they are not uh, that widespread compared to that for men. So what we do is for them to come together as uh, groups mm. under FBOs. So then mm. under that facility, then they can get a support, but under the group identity. We'll be right back. Yeah. The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Ecobank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back. I'm excited. Today is Farmers Day and uh, you are watching The Heart Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Octoglo Ghana Limited and supported by your favorite bank, Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. And I have in the studio Paulina Adi. You, you, were, you were talking about um, um, how women should stay uh, at where, I mean, their comfort zone. I mean, you said that off air. I wish you could repeat that yes, for me. Yes, um, I cited an example with a yeah. cassava. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the production, both men and women produce cassava, but you find a lot more men in cassava production. And for the post-production, it's an area for women. So I am looking at where we would focus on that activity and then bring them the right equipment to transform the cassava into various uh, products. Mm -hmm. When it comes to gari, cassava dough, it's an area for women. 
and they are doing quite well in that sphere. Mm -hmm. The same goes for the uh, oils, the local oils, palm oil, coconut oil, etc. Mm -hmm. So where we find women dominating a particular area along the help chain, them there we have too. to help them okay. there. Yes. Now, I, I, as I, I also want to add okay. this bit uh, that uh, farming is at various scales. And uh, the ministry has also facilitated the acquisition of um, tractors to help the farmers. We have the large scale operators and they can go for the massive agencies, etc. But a small scale farmer cannot. You know we have this uh, power tillers mm -hmm. which uh, came mm -hmm. into the country yeah. just to address these uh, issues. But you know our attitudinal problems. We found out or it is so common to find these power tillers doing some other tasks. But mm -hmm. of course, they helped with small-scale farming to some extent. Talking about attitude, now as we celebrate today Farmers' Day, what lessons, Paulina, uh, should we learn uh, in order to have the right attitude or to be adapted by you know, all stakeholders to, to ensure that agri grows from strength to strength? What would that right. be? As a farmer, mm -hmm. one lesson is for us to persist in our operations so tomorrow we can also be an award so for farmers i think we should just uh, keep going and then be in touch with the ministry for the necessary support if they need be and as consumers i will entreat all of us to be eating from what is produced locally otherwise we just uh, put the farmer into a difficulty of not knowing how to manage what he may have produced if we are pulling from that angle, I think it will encourage them to produce, and as they produce more, it will also reduce the production cost. Paulina, for production purposes and for uh, 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 yes, my, my crew and I sometimes go, you know, um, to the hinterlands to see what's happening. Now, as we drive by, we see big farms, and I say to myself, I really want to be a farmer, not being a farmer, but I want to go into farming activities, and then. On the second thought, I'm like, uh, no. How do we change the mindset of people like myself who want to go into it, but on the second thought, decide for whatever reason, right. don't so want to do it? The ministry over time has pulled the award winners. They have an association, so they can be a resource pool for those who want to go into farming or who are into farming it's, and they want to tap into the right, resources. Uh, uh, but it's farmers stay really gonna towards winning awards. I mean what, what you, from, from where you say you mentioned our these before and then you're retracing again now. Can I assume that farmers stay in Ghana now is just to give awards to mm, some deserving farm, farmers? Oh, it is just to recognize their efforts. Is that the main uh, uh, purpose or the main aim for it's the day? It's also to encourage others to get there. What of, what, what of um, perhaps uh, calling all stakeholders together and sharing ideas and making sure that the sector is revamped more than concentrating well, there are various, more there on, are various, on, on awards? Yeah, there are various platforms to address this. And as part of National Farmers Day, we have a whole week the first, of the, the first day of the week is uh, a farmers forum where there's this kind of interaction. Nationwide? With, yeah, it's national. So that is what is done for the national and where the, the region that is hosting is where this event takes place most of the time. Yeah. But uh, we have various platforms to address farmer problems. And we have one that goes nationwide and it goes across regions. Which is which one? Which is the research extension liaison committee how many platform. farmers know we have these farmers well i mean it's cast wide for all the districts so they bring their issues what has to be policy is grouped as such what has to be a research issue is grouped as such and this is what is fed into the research system mm. for us to get the necessary answers to those uh, questions and some of them are even solved at farmer level so we have these platforms across the country and it goes on every year. National Farmers Day will be the peak, but after that, we continue with our usual activities, and it includes a lot of educational platforms for farmers. Mm. We are now in election year, Paulina. Which political party do you think of, uh, I would say, the best alternative to actually catapult Ghana towards the path of 
sustained agricultural uh, uh, growth and national development? Well, I wouldn't want to link this to any specific political party, but uh, I would want to say the prevailing conditions, economic, determine what anybody can do within his or her tenure. And uh, we have progressed, we have come a long way, but for me, we have to be loyal to whichever government is in power, and what we lay down has to be followed through by whoever succeeds um, the incumbent. Ghana is watching, um, the yeah. youth, everyone is watching you right now. Farmers Day, what advice would you give to specifically the youth, people who want to ask this earlier, but this is to, to the youth? What, what would you tell them? Um, I want to go into farming, I don't want to go into farming. What would you say, apart from you having the awardees and they're going around to, what advice would you give to, to the youth? All right, I would want to tell the youth that it's a very rewarding experience to go into farming. It depends on the commodity you go into, but then you need to find out who is demanding what commodity. And even in your house, where you don't even have space, you can do a lot. Really? There, yes, a lot. We have transformed as a country and we are consuming a lot of these um, exotic vegetables. We grow them under very hazardous uh, conditions in some locations. But then I have seen places where they have gotten into tiered gardens. Mm -hmm. On the walls, you have all these things growing and they have good points of sales and they are making so can, good can, money. So can someone actually walk to the ministry and say, Auntie Paulina, I want to go into agri Would there be some training for persons like this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we have a whole uh, unit in charge of youth in agriculture. There's a whole program for that. It has been reviewed. So I think it will now address the needs of the youth better. For every program, you cannot uh, talk about it being static. You have to just uh, make it responsive to the needs of the country. So that is what has been done. Ati Paulina, thank you so much for talking You're to welcome. the heart. Thank you. I've been talking to Miss Paulina Adi. Um, she is the acting director of Women in Agriculture Development Directorate of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. And uh, you've been watching the hard truth. And we are proudly brought to you by Octoglow Ghana Limited and supported by Echo Bank, Deep and African Bank. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and uh, have a good evening. Bye. The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Money in the agric, uh, agric sector. Well, agric is linked to industry. So, when it goes to industry, we all applaud, but the basic raw material is provided from the agricultural sector mm. and that goes to industry let me take a commodity like cassava right. cassava has transited from a poor man's crop to now an industrial crop it is being used in our breweries and it is through the effort of production that cassava has gotten there we also having it for various uh, uses including confectionery so I would want to say Agric is playing a very vital role. And in addition to that, we also have the service sector, which is also part of the whole system. But you cannot single agriculture out and uh, just uh, talk about it uh, going down the trend. Mm. Yes. If you can recall, I, I think then the first National Farmers Day was uh, I think celebrated on the first Friday of December yeah. in 1986 at Osino in the Eastern Region. That was in 85. 85, thank you very much. With well, the best farmer at the time receiving two machetes, a pair of uh, Wellington boots. And a transistor uh, radio. Exactly. Now, we've come a long way from that, you know, with the best farmer now winning juicy awards. In 2015, for instance, ma'am, national best farmer Ibrahim Musa won house, 3,000 Ghana city check, um, a laptop, a car, you know, among others. Let me ask you, 
in your view, how effective do you think these prizes or awards have motivated other farmers to put in more effort and um, into the investment of the agriculture? Right. Uh, for any venture, you'd have to invest. And uh, a lot have done so to get to the position of being national best mm. awardees. And uh, for any human being, we have ambitions. Somebody wants to build a house, buy a car, etc. How but is the selection done, the criteria? No. How do you even say that, I, of course, I'm the, I'm the best for my right. wish. I wish. Right. Yes. I mean, right. how is that done? Right. The agricultural extension agents mm -hmm. live with these farmers and they know who are the promising farmers. And this selection is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. So mm -hmm. when these names are brought up, we have a selection committee uh, drawn from the top universities of the country. And they go around all these locations to really ascertain whether what they've been given are the hard facts. And uh, a video footage is also done and it is brought down to Accra for the final screening. So that is how it goes. Okay. But it is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. And that is thing to celebrate at all this day. Yes, we do. We do have a lot to celebrate. It will be good to go around the countryside to see what is going on out there. Why isn't that translating, ma'am? Why isn't that translating into uh, a much produce or much money in the agric, uh, agric sector? Well, agric is linked to industry. So when it goes to industry, we all applaud. But the basic raw material is provided from the agricultural sector. Mm. And that goes to industry. Let me take a commodity like cassava. Right. Cassava has transited from a poor man's crop to now an industrial crop. It is being used in our breweries and it is through the effort of production that cassava has gotten there. We also having it for various uh, uses, including confectionery. So I'd want to say Agric is playing a very vital role. And in addition to that, we also have the service sector, which is also part of the whole system. But you cannot single agriculture out and uh, just uh, talk about it uh, going down the trend, mm. yes. If you can recall, uh, I think then the first National Farmers Day was uh, I think celebrated on the first Friday of December yeah. in 1986, that's Osino in the Eastern region. That was in 85. 85, thank you very much. When well, the best farmer at the time receiving two machetes, a pair of uh, Wellington boots. And a transistor uh, radio. Exactly. Now, we've come a long way from that, you know, with the best farmer now winning juicy awards. In 2015, for instance, ma'am, national best farmer Ibrahim Musa won house, 3,000 Ghana to the check, um, a laptop, a car, you know, among others, let me ask you, in your view, how effective do you think these prizes or awards have motivated other farmers to put in more effort and um, into the investment of the agriculture? Right. Uh, for any venture, you'd have to invest. And uh, a lot have done so to get to the position of being national best mm. awardees. And uh, for any human being. We have ambitions. Somebody wants to build a house, buy a car, etc. How but is the selection done, the criteria? No. How do you even say that I, of course, I'm, I'm the best for my right. wish. I wish. Right. Yes. I mean, right. how is that done? Right. The agricultural extension agents mm -hmm. live with these farmers and they know who are the promising farmers. And this selection is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. So mm -hmm. when these names are brought up, we have a selection committee uh, drawn from the top universities of the country and they go around all these locations to really ascertain whether what they've been given are the hard and that translating into uh, a much produce or much money in the agric, uh, agric sector. Well, agric is linked to industry. So when it goes to industry, we all applaud, but the basic raw material is provided from the agricultural sector mm. and that goes to industry let me take a commodity like cassava right. cassava has transited from a poor man's crop to now an industrial crop it is being used in our breweries and it is through the effort of production that cassava has gotten there 
we also having it for various uh, uses, including confectionery. So I'd want to say Agric is playing a very vital role. And in addition to that, we also have the service sector, which is also part of the whole system. But you cannot single agriculture out and uh, just uh, talk about it uh, going down the trend. Mm. Yes. If you can recall, uh, I think then the first National Farmers Day was uh, I think celebrated on the first Friday of December yeah. in 1986. That's Osino in the Eastern Region. That was in 85. 85. Thank you very much. When well, the best farmer at the time receiving two machetes, a pair of uh, Wellington boots. And a transistor uh, radio. Exactly. Now, we've come a long way from that, you know, with the best farmer now winning juicy awards. In 2015, for instance, ma'am, National Best Farmer Ibrahim Musa won house, 3,000 Ghana to the check, um, a laptop, a car, you know, among others. Let me ask you, in your view, how effective do you think these prizes or awards have motivated other farmers to put in more effort and um, into the investment of the agriculture? Right. Uh, for any venture, you'd have to invest. And uh, a lot have done so to get to the position of being national best mm. awardees. And uh, for any human being, we have ambitions. Somebody wants to build a house, buy a car, etc. How but is the selection done, the criteria? No. How do you even say that I, of course, I'm, I'm the best for my right. wish? I wish. Right. Yes. I mean, right. how is that done? Right. The agricultural extension agents mm. live with these farmers and they know who are the promising farmers. And this selection is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. So mm. when these names are brought up, we have a selection committee uh, drawn from the top universities of the country and they go around all these locations to really ascertain whether what they've been given are the hard facts. And uh, a video footage is also done and it is brought down to Accra for the final screening. So that is how it goes. Okay. But it is done in universities of the country and they go around all these locations to really ascertain whether what they've been given are the hard facts. And uh, a video footage is also done and it is brought down to Accra for the final screening. So that is how it goes. Okay. But it is done in concert with the chief farmer of the region. And that is for the national. And then for the regions, the names are also provided for the regional and then it goes down to the district. Okay. So they have to look at the scale of operation. They also look at how diversified the operation is, whether you are very no innovative, supporting the community in also to improve their farming efforts and so on. Mm. So that is how it is done. So going back to the question, yeah. how, how much do you think these prizes, you know, does it really motivate uh, the farmers to yes, really it does. want to do more? It does. It does motivate them mm. because um, if, for instance, I have a challenge with transportation and then I get um, a pickup for free, it will help me transport my produce and it will bring efficiency into my operation. Mm. And it does motivate others. Uh, uh, but Paulina, if, if fantastic, the ministry provides cars for, for the best farm. What of the roads? I mean, if the roads are horrible, how do you expect well, the farmer to ply well, or use that road to go yes, to the farm? Yes, for the agricultural the sector, we also have the uh, feeder roads. So they also uh, are they do feeder their roads meat? doing yes. their job? In some areas, yes. Because without the roads, of course, you would have your uh, produce perishing, in the farming communities and it will never get to the points for consumption right so it is a concerted effort i would say do you think that smallholders and peas and farmers have over the years received the requisite support from um, the government in developing themselves and increasing uh, their production capacities yeah i think the government has done its best as i speak we still have an uh, extension services delivery free every farmer has to tap into what, whatever numbers we have we have right. challenges though but we are now complementing that with um, an electronic uh, platform so that is free and uh, we also have subsidies on fertilizer for them to 
buy at reduced costs to increase their overall yields. We have uh, various um, interventions for farmers training and so on. So I think uh, at a smallholder level, the transforming bit for me is the market mm. access. Once they have market access on their own, they are able to do quite well for themselves. We'll be right back. A great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure, while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back to The Hard Truth. And today is Farmer's Day uh, under the theme uh, Agriculture, a business response to economic growth. I still have in the studio uh, Mrs. Paulina Adi. She's the acting director of the Women in Agriculture Development Directorate of the Ministry of Food and uh, Agriculture. Mommy wanted to say something? Yes, uh, yes. Talking about markets, mm. that is what generates the demands for the farmers to produce and produce more. And by markets, I'm not just talking of food physically being on the markets, but we as consumers mm -hmm. to consume from what is produced locally. And that is what is going to drive the agricultural value chain. Having talked about the value chain, we talk about uh, farmers who are just at the point of production. But for Farmers Day, we have now recognized even agro-processes who transform agricultural produce into various uh, products. And we've come along, we improved packaging, minimization of post-harvest losses because when we transform we are able to preserve the foods to keep them until we need talking about post-harvest losses yeah. don't we talk about that all the time i mean on on your records yeah. we know or it's stated that the, the records are clear that um we've actually done well at that side but in reality when you talk to the farmers it's a different story. Yes, that is uh, at the point of harvest, yes. when we hit the glats. Yes, and uh, well, I talked about agric linking up with industry. If we can get industry taking up most of these uh, produce, mm -hmm. we can preserve them and then just have them all year round. But uh, there has been a weakness along that line. There are some farmers, or let me say processes, who are doing very well to process most of their products from local production. And I think we need to applaud them for that effort. We have very big uh, factories, but uh, they are unable to process foods because of some attitude. More. It does, it does motivate them. Mm -hmm. Because um, if for instance, I have a challenge with transportation and then I get um, a pickup for free, it will help me transport my produce and it will bring efficiency into my operation. Mm. And it does motivate others. Uh, uh, but Paulina, if, if fantastic, the ministry provides cars for, for the best farm. What of the roads? I mean, if the roads are horrible, how do you expect well, the farmer to ply well, or use that road to go yes, to the farm? Yes, for the agricultural sector, we also have the uh, feeder roads. So they also uh, are the do feeder their roads meat, doing yes. their job? In some areas, yes. Because without the roads, of course, you would have your uh, produce perishing in the farming communities and it will never get to the points for consumption right so it is a concerted effort i would say do you think that smallholders and peas and farmers have over the years received the requisite support from um, the government in developing themselves and increasing uh, their production capacities yeah i think the government has done its best as i speak we still have a uh, extension services delivery free every farmer has to tap into what whatever numbers we have we have right. challenges though but we are now complementing that with um, an electronic uh, platform so that is free and uh, we also have subsidies on fertilizer for them to 
buy at reduced costs to increase their overall yields. We have uh, various um, interventions for farmers training and so on. So I think uh, at a smallholder level, the transforming bit for me is the market mm. access. Once they have market access on their own, they are able to do quite well for themselves. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth with Akosia Kunedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. At Ecobank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across. Acreages of maize, even their tree crops, mm. because they can afford. We've even had a woman who won the best a yam farmer. So there are women who are capable, but we cannot cast it so wide. There are successes, but they are not uh, that widespread compared to that for men. So what we do is for them to come together as uh, groups mm. under uh, FBUs. So then mm. under that facility, then they can get a support, but under the group identity. We'll be right back. Yeah. The Hard Truth with Akosia Kunedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure, while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back. I'm excited. Today is Farmer's Day and uh, you are watching The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Octo Glogana Limited and supported by your favorite bank, Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. And I have in the studio, Paulina Adi. You, you, you were talking about um, um, how women should stay uh, at where, I mean, their comfort zone. I mean, you said that off air. I wish you could repeat that yes, for me. Um, I cited an example with a yes. cassava. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the production, both men and women produce cassava, but you find a lot more men in cassava production. And for the post-production, it's an area for women. So I am looking at where we'll focus on that activity and then bring them the right equipment to transform the cassava into various uh, products. Mm -hmm. When it comes to gari, cassava dough, it's an area for women. And they are doing quite well in that sphere. Mm -hmm. The same goes for the uh, oils, the local oils, palm oil, coconut oil, etc. Mm -hmm. So where we find women dominating a particular area along the help chain. them there. We have to, to help them okay. there, yes. Now, I, 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 I also want to add okay. this bit, uh, that uh, farming is at very...